Hello everybody and welcome to the next instalment of my Disney kind of tip series. If you haven't seen any of the other videos they will all be in the same playlist as this video. I will link it up there if you want to check them out. So today I am going to talk fast passes. I was very confused at what to do <laughs> before I went this time. I've been, I think I've been 12 times before this time so this was my 13th trip. Um, and I've never had to use this new fast pass system before. So I try to do a lot of research, I watch a lot of Disney YouTubers anyway, um, but I think I still made some mistakes. So I wanted to kind of talk through those with you and kind of give you some tips on the best way to book your fast passes and generally just a quick overview of how the whole fast pass system works and everything like that. Because I know I've had a few of my friends ask the same question. <laughs> so, to start with, if you buy a 14 day ticket or more, 14, 21 day ticket, ultimate ticket from the UK, you get fast passes included. Fast passes can be pre booked up to 30 days in advance or 60 days in advance if you are staying on a Disney resort. So, I didn't stay on a Disney resort this time, so I only had 30 days to pre book. I got everything I wanted so you can get the like obviously everything they don't like give all of the fast passes out at once at the 60 day mark and then don't keep any back they definitely like keep some back to make it more fair so I got everything that I wanted fast passes in the UK are released at midday they previously used to be released at about 5 a.m which was quite difficult for people to kind of book their fast passes but I was really really surprised to see that it would it had been moved to 7 a.m USA time which is 12 noon for us so what I did is I set a little reminder on my phone five minutes before like a little alarm to kind of <laughs> remember it's 12 o'clock and don't forget especially when you're at work it's so just like you get so involved in what you're doing and completely forget so I set a little reminder that it was like five minutes before lunchtime five minutes before I could actually start booking my fast passes we'd pre-discussed which fast passes that we wanted and which parks we were going to go to on which days um to kind of decide this I used um, I think it's www.info.co.uk, I'm not sure.com and also I think it was Undercover Tourist, I'm not sure what the websites are but they are really good for helping you plan kind of crowds for each day and everything um, I'll link them down below. So one of them will tell you whether there is the opening times for the park during the day and if there are any extra magic hours in that day. If you are staying on resort and you obviously are entitled to those extra magic hours I would advise going to those parks on those days because you get that extra hour on a morning when like the parks really quiet or an extra hour at night and um, if you do not stay on resort I advise you to avoid those parks because everyone else that is staying on resort will be there <laughs> basically and the queues will be longer like during the day as well because they're not just going to go for the hour on the morning and then go somewhere else they're probably going to spend a good few hours there so if they've got extra magic hours on on those days I'd probably avoid the parks and also the I think it's undercover tourist I'm not sure has like crowd levels and like an traffic light system of whether it's going to be really busy like okay or like really quiet based on like history and things that have like events that are on and things like that so that's a really good planning tool as well um so booking your fast pass is really simple on the my disney experience app i advise downloading it because it's a really good tool to be using while you're in the parks as well for changing your fast passes and things like that so you can pick three per day not per park <laughs> <laughs> so you get a choice of three fast passes for each day and in Epcot and Hollywood Studios there is a tier system so I will link a website down below or I'll type them in the description box the two sets of tiers for those parks so essentially it means that you can pick one fast pass from tier one and then two fast passes from the remaining rides which is your tier two rides and um, basically I think they're just trying to stop people in those parks 
because there's less rides in them for kind of hogging the good rides to make sure that obviously they are spread out over all of the rides in the whole park. Um, in Hollywood Studios I think that tier one rides are essentially Fantasmic Show, um, Rock and Roller Coaster and Toy Story Mania. There might be others in there but I can't remember them. And also in Epcot, Soren and Test Track are in the tier one rides. Um, possibly Mission Mars, I'm not sure. Um, but again it means that you can only have one or the other. So I'll link them down below so you can decide which one you really, really want to do or if you're going for two days, pick one and then pick the other the other day. Once you've actually used your fast passes for the day, you can book more. So as soon as you've used your first three for that day, if there are any remaining in the park, you can then book further fast passes, which is unlimited. But if you've, as well, sorry, I forgot to mention, you cannot say you get an hour slot for a fast pass so you can turn up at 10 or you can turn up at 11 or any time in between that but during that slot you can't have another fast pass booked so you make sure that you can't have them all booked for like the same hour and then you're going to disappear off to another park so you'll at least have three hours black blocked out during your day of fast passes so once you've used them up, so I would advise if none of them are time sensitive like shows or anything, try and book them for earlier in the morning. So once they are all done and out of the way, you can then book any fast passes for later on in the afternoon or towards the night or anything, which is why the My Disney Experience app it comes in so useful. All of the parks have Wi-Fi, so it means you can access it pretty much everywhere. Some of the parks Wi-Fi is better than others. I found that Animal Kingdoms was not the best. I really struggled to get a signal um, like in some of the areas, but the other parks were absolutely fine. So use your My Disney Experience app to like keep looking for like further fast passes during the day. Just I love the fast pass system, just walking up to a ride and going straight on it, it was fantastic. So now you know how to book fast passes, you need to know which ones to book. So I had this dilemma, I didn't know, because there were some rides that I knew I definitely wanted to do, but I didn't know whether I would need a fast pass for them or not. And I didn't really want to waste one and there was definitely some that I should have booked that I didn't and definitely ones that I did book that I shouldn't have booked. So I just wanted to share that with you, the ones that I did book and ones that I probably would book in the future. So first day we went to Epcot. Ones that I booked was Soarin', the Pixar movie festival and the meet characters for Mickey, Minnie and Goofy. So, <laughs> Soarin' is a must. There is normally at least now a queue on it. I would also say that Test Track is a must because Test Track had, again, like 90 minutes on it all day. Um, but you can't book both of them at the same time because of the tier system. So if you're going back the next day, make sure you book the other one. Or you might be really lucky and one of the queues might be quite short, but we weren't and it was really, really busy. So the other two, the Pixar Movie Festival, mm, pretty much a walk on ride, didn't need a fast pass for it. Um, it was a good thing to go and see, but it was good to get out of the sun. It wasn't something I'd make a beeline for again. Um, so I'd probably change that for something like Figment's Imagination or Spaceship Earth. Um, then we had meeting the characters with Mickey, Minnie and Goofy really really good especially if you know that some like Phil had never met characters before I knew I wanted to meet obviously Mickey Minnie and I thought he's not going to want to stand in an hour queue to meet Mickey and Minnie so that was the way I used my fast passes because I thought there's no way he's going to do that so I will make an effort and literally 10-15 minutes and we were in seeing them so good so I, especially in Epcot, where there's not that many rides and the big ones like your Mission Mars, your Test Track and your uh, Soarin', those are the three that are going to have the big queues on them. Everything else you were looking at like 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, so I would probably make the most of booking fast passes with characters because they are the other things that have got quite big weights on them. Anna and Elsa was about 45 minutes 
um, the Anna and Elsa ride was quite a long one as well but Frozen isn't really my thing so if you can book that one as well um, then we second day well second Disney park that we did was Magic Kingdom Magic Kingdom has a lot of rides a lot of good rides and they pretty much all have really big queues on them we booked uh, Toy Story Mania no, it wasn't Toy Story Mania, it was uh, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. We booked Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. The only fast pass I could get for that was like 7 o'clock at night. It was the only time I could get. Um, and we also had... What was it? Oh, we also had uh, meeting Mickey in Times Square Theatre, which was special. <laughs> it was very special. But again, that had a really, really long way on it. So it was definitely something I knew I wouldn't get to do unless I had a fast pass for it. So I do not regret booking that one. In the future, I'd probably not book it because I've done it, but I'd change it for one of the other rides. So most fast passes for me, there's gonna be more than three, but you can choose which ones you want or go more than one day is Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. I love a good shooting game. <laughs> and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, it wasn't that long, so definitely need a fast pass for it. Um, we did Thunder Mountain. Thunder Mountain was a good 45 minute queue to an hour. Definitely need a fast pass for it. Splash Mountain, we waited about two hours for <laughs> because it said 45 minutes when we walked in and then they had technical difficulties and you kind of passed the point of no return. So all the mountains, Space Mountain as well, we didn't try and get on it but I know it had a really big weight on it. So they, even the little rides had long weights on them. I think Small World only had 20 minutes on it but Peter Pan again was getting towards an hour, so was um, Pirates, anything in Magic Kingdom. I would recommend doing a fast pass for if you want to do it and make sure that you get on it. If you have a ride that is special to you, book a fast pass for it in Magic Kingdom. Then we headed to Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom was one where I'd booked a fast pass that I then changed because the queue was so short on it. Um, when we walked in, we wanted to do Bugs Life. I had a fast pass for it later on in the afternoon but it had a 20 minute queue on it. So I just walked, we just walked straight on it. And then as I was doing the queue, I was like, right, I'm changing that fast pass because we've done it. <laughs> so you can change your fast passes even on the day of your kind of visit. So I changed that to, I was really surprised I managed to get Expedition Everest for later on in the day. So the fast passes that I had booked for that day was It's a Bug's Life, um, Carly River Rapids and the Safari. But obviously I switched Bugs Life for um, Everest. I would probably say that they are definitely ones that you need to book fast passes for. Bugs Life probably wouldn't bother. Um, I don't know what the queue was like for Dinosaur. It might have been middle of the road, kind of 45 minutes, half an hour-ish. The Carly River Rapids had a 120 minute wait on it because it was a really hot day. And it's not that long of a ride. So definitely if you want to do that, book a fast pass for it. The safari had a ridiculous weight on it all day. Um, Lion King, we got seats. We were there not too late to be fair. We were there probably a good half an hour before the show and we got in fine, no bother. Um, so it probably wouldn't bother for the Lion King show. You get kind of better seats but not really. Um, so they are the only really ones that I would change in Animal Kingdom. Then we had Hollywood Studios. I always forget their names. It's because I want to call it MGM. <laughs> I'm really old school. So we had Hollywood Studios, my battery's about to die. Ah. Uh, so I had booked Toy Story Mania. Absolutely fantastic, definitely book it. We booked uh, Tower of Terror. There was a ridiculous queue on it, definitely book it. Um, I also booked Fantasmic, which was the only show that I'd booked Fast Passes for, and I think I'll do it again, especially for that or Rivers of Light where it's sat in a stadium because you got so much better seats, you just walked in, didn't have to queue for hours on end to start with, so it was so much better. Um, we also did, what other Fast Passes did we do? We did, um, oh, what's it called? Indiana Jones, it's just a good thing to go and sit down and see but there's not that many rides in Hollywood Studios to actually book fast passes for so 
yeah just if you like it definitely book it in uh, Hollywood Studios we didn't get on rock and roller coaster because there was at least an hour queue on it at all times um but because we booked other things we couldn't book that one because of the tier system so definitely take that into consideration but yes fast passes can get complicated I'll link as much information to help you down below in the description box but if you've got any questions at all if you're a little bit confused just comment down below your question and I'll be sure to get back to you or I'll send some links or anything that can help you but thank you so much for watching I hope you're enjoying my little information series if you've missed anything head to the playlist and go and check it out and I will see you all next week with more videos and don't forget to hit the notification so you don't miss any of the vlogs and I'll see you all very soon thank you so much for watching bye I'm gonna be myself or I could be someone else no one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make mistakes I just wanna feel alive it's just what I do when I'm out so